All right, welcome back. It's still news up. We are coasting home right about now. As we want to take a cost with Luru Carter, um, uh, economic policies of this administration. We, we, we titled the conversation Economic Rebound, uh, and we're asking the question, are President Tunumbu's policies capable of ending hardship? We have seen quite some policies in recent times, and um, in the last 365 days of this administration, we have seen quite some policies, uh, policies that um, the federal government did say is get towards um, taking Nigerians out of poverty. We've seen palliatives uh, being, being shared amongst Nigeria. We've seen concerns around um, uh, the CNG vehicles, which Nigeria, which government says would improve uh, transportation at lower cost, uh, many of them. But then we've also seen policies around um, uh, taxes. We've also seen policies around um, uh, increase in power tariff. We've also seen policies around removal of fuel subsidy, which has brought on due hardship. We've also see, seen policies around removal of education subsidy, even though the government had also brought about um, uh, what they call um, uh, student loans, which we've not seen take off yet. We've also seen policies around uh, consumer credit scheme, even though we haven't seen that take off yet. These are all policies of government, and we are asking, are uh, they all capable of ending the hardship that Nigerians are, are being faced with at the moment. Joining me right about now is uh, Tosi, Oluwa Tosi Oladeta, who is a public uh, policy expert. So good to have you on the show. Yeah, good to see you too this morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Nigerians. Uh, I don't know, uh, what comes to mind for you when you hear policies of this administration? Well, the inaugural speech of the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria started with a policy. Yes. Which is fuel subsidy is gone. gone. Yes. <laughs> After that, even without the minister has been appointed, without putting a structure on ground, without even critically reviewing the impact and the effect of those poli policies, next thing said, liberalization of the foreign exchange, Change, yeah. which are very laudable schemes. It's very good to have a novel idea. However, the presentation and the implementation is another concept that should even be factored even before you come out to unleash a novel idea. So, unleash, <laughs> use the word unleash. Okay. So, for example, I was just discussing with some friends and some colleagues and we saw another policy, which mm -hmm. is the Advancement Stabilization Acceleration Program, which was released. A very beautiful 65-page document that was released. Some of them were able to address, okay, what are the key concerns of Nigerians? But by the time I look at the implementation plan, I know that oh, there's actually a gap between what you've identified as the main problems and the road forward for the implementation. In fact, that at the end of the policy, there's also a budget, which mm. means that the government needs to further expand its spending. Now, those spendings, are they geared towards the infrastructural development of the nation um, in the short term? Some of them, yes, some of them are not, yes. But still, yes, in that same document, they presented that um, the revenue to GDP is just like about 8%, yes. which means that government is advocating for more increase in revenue. So revenue. we've seen certain things at regard IF, FIRS, we've seen certain things, custom duties, and there about. Oh, the um, president of the fiscal tax and fiscal reform committee, Taiwo Ede, just that. recently made sure that, oh, we are, not, we are going to peg the cost of import, importing goods at 800 when the dollar is trading. So, in fact, when you, when customer was charging about 1,500, you knew that this thing was going to have an impact. You should have seen it fallen. So, part of the things I think the government have done is, yeah, they might have some laudable plans, but they did not consider the implementations and the effect on some of those things in the plans. But are they aware of some of the concerns that the government is facing? Yes, they are very aware. For example, in the, um, in the new framework that was established yesterday, one of the slides made mention of one of the slides made mention of some of the major issues when it comes to the monetary policy rate. So, for yeah. example, we have inflation at about 33.67. This is one of the highest in the last 18, last, years. 18 years. It has been only 16 or close to 19, 19 yeah. consecutive rise yes. over a year on year, yeah, on year yeah. which means that is a threat to national security. We've seen interest rate rise as um, up to like about 26.75. There's no business that is going to be able to pay back his whole principal within three years. Yeah. In fact, some of these business margins are like, by the time you look at the gross profit margins, even though they're having up to like about 50% um, gross profit margin, average you see 10%. <laughs> by, interest by interest rate. So by the time interest rate, the companies are going out of, yeah. Business. And, and the major issue is that of food inflation. Food inflation is like about 40.5, which is, um, it started from like about 24% yeah. um, one year ago. This is more or less like the highest in like 
about close to three decades. So the government have probably the government has a feedback that okay, these people are facing these challenges, such as what they've seen in those their implementation. And I think the government even have a master plan now. Oh, these are the things that they want to do. However, my concern about the government is not getting technocrats to be able to think about it. Although some of those their decisions come in very late. Yeah. After very uh, <laughs> they are very reactive, they are not proactive about these are the certain decisions to be taken. Now, for example, let's even look at the student Nigerian Education Loan Fund, mm -hmm. um, in which Jumovia, which is a veteran in banking, is serving as the chairman of is also part of the is also part of the um, initiative that they want to roll out in the master plan, which is one of the slides that is going to be that is going to be presented. Now, is, is it a very good thing to have a Nigerian education loan fund so as to be able to increase access to universities? Very laudable idea. In fact, a lot of universities in the world, Ivy League universities, are funded by education fund, in which yeah. the education for some some schools education fund is even larger than the def, than the old GDP of Nigeria itself. So, is it very good to be able to? Um, have a high level of standard of education in Nigeria. Very good. In fact, if we look at what university ranked, only Covenant University is among the first 800 to 1,000 of universities. In fact, the one that is coming behind is probably Ibadan, University of Ibadan, which has been, which was more or less like the premier institution in Nigeria. University of Lagos is coming sometime, something between 1,000 to 1,200, such as Federal University of Technology Akure. Now, with that student loan, be able to address the deficit that we have in our education system alone. No. Is it appropriate to even have a loan for students to go to school? Yeah, very laudable idea. But when the student graduate from school, are the industries ready enough to be able to absorb them into jobs? I, I, okay, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's look at this. Let's take this in phases. Now that we're discussing education, student loan, a fantastic idea like you said. What happens to other factors of education, other factors around the education sector. ASU is a key component. NASU is a key component. All of this all of this all of these sectors are very key contributory I mean factors to the the, the the survival of the education sector. Now I I'm being given a loan and then one year into my education, my, my, my semester or my my my, my academic tenure, ASU goes on strike. And all of that. So, if we must get education right, it must be all inclusive. Very correct. The the student loan is even more or less something that should be taken as the last oh, mark, yes, yes. not the first oh, mark. So it seems like you are trying to take the last solution even before the first solution. And by the time you are trying to take reactive steps, you now come back. Oh, we actually need to even fix the issues of our school. We need to even increase. How much is the minimum wage of the? of an yes, average yes. lecturer or a professor. Someone who is more inspired to go into a political environment than and to go and take a public office where he knows he's going to get in a monument than to sit down and burn his head of studies for him to be able to um, get, get, become a professor or become mm. a doctor mm. within, the Nigerian, within any Nigerian university. In fact, the only Nigerian university that is ranked among the top business schools in the world, which is um, Lagos Business School, is not a, private, it's not a public it's university. We saw about Twige, the disease about Twige that Establish a university, and we're seeing that oh, the cost of people were saying that oh, why is the cost of the university fees and the accommodation so high? If you want to get something good, something good doesn't come cheap. However, a price needs to be paid. But can every an, an average Nigerian afford to go to somewhere like Abertwigwe University? No. But we still see in the same country where people live. People graduate from school. I graduate from University of Lagos, or let me say, I graduate from Covenant University. You go abroad. Go and graduate, you graduate from Yale University or graduate from Harvard University. Both of us are sitting on the same interview. Both of us even need to have access the same job. You'll be given a greater preference because you have a higher quality of. In fact, we don't even cherish the made in Nigerian education simply because. And this was not the case um, like about 40, 50 years back. In fact, the Nigerian education was even the one that was even feeding. Um, into the Western world yeah. that was even yeah. advancing the yeah. development. We have one of the scholarships yes, and, scholarships and all that. Scholarships. There are no structures around that. So I think the federal government is reactive or taking the last decision before even considering the whole picture. You don't come and say you want to give people loans. Yeah, it's a very laudable idea, yes. But if you don't fix infrastructure, if you don't fix research, you don't fix intelligence, you don't fix um, the state of the art of the lecturers, you don't fix the non-association. But this is not, it's not good for me. I would rather go abroad to go and study <laughs> and take a loan. Um, take probably a, um, a STEM loan or take um, probably another fund loan. Once I, know that, once I graduate from Harvard Business School, I'm likely to get a job of over $100,000. Once I graduate from University of Lagos, even Covenant University, the likelihood of me seeing a job immediately and being able to pay for that 
loan is 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 very minimal. So and in fact, after they give them graduates, most people, Nigerians are even living in the country. You know what? Uh, this this conversation is is pretty very deep. Um, now we're talking about loans. Okay, so let's also look at the consumer credit scheme that the federal government has also proposed. I, I'm aware that just about uh, I call it a paltry 100 billion naira was a mark for the consumer credit loan for an economy for a credit economy of over, over 1.4 trillion naira. Just a paltry 100 billion naira has been a mark. You see that um, scheme or that initiative as a laudable one as well? <laughs> or you think it's just a, just a going to scratch the surface of uh, consumer credit um, concerns? So for the real thing is, okay, down to consumer credit. So let's even look at advanced claims where this concept was borrowed from. So if, for example, I'm in United States of America. I want, I'm just graduating out of school. I have a job. I just got my job. I need to drive a Mercedes 2024 model. I can simply bring in my credit card. They are going to look at something like my FICO score. FICO is like Fair Isaac Corporation, which assesses oh, the length of my credit history, my credit mix, my payment history, the number of credits, and how well I've performed. And they are going to give me high FICO score or a very low FICO score. So when we even bring it to likes of corporate, we see credit rating like um, that is done by S&P, Fitch, Moody's, here about. So I'm able to pay over the milestones. I'm able to pay over that long term. Now, the federal government um, appointed Peter Wabu as well worked a veteran in, um, in technology such as Microsoft before com coming into BOI to um, start micro lending yeah. and to be able to each person this project. And their target is to be able to have 50% of the, of the working Nigerians to be onboarded on this scheme by, um, by 2030. However, this 50% that you want to be onboarded on this scheme, although they had started their initial rollout with the civil servant, know that they can even track that, okay, you have a source of revenue. But Will I be? Will I want to have a delayed gratification? It's a very laudable idea. It's, it's a very reasonable idea, but it's still a, a cart before the horse. You first need to even build an industry where people can even generate and even feed themselves well. Not even concerned about the. Let's even look at the marginal propensity to save. The marginal propensity to consume today is greater than the marginal propensity to save for the future. So I receive my salary today because I know that the price of goods and commodities are likely to rise within the next one year or within the next one month. I'd rather go to the market, go and buy today and keep rather than me save and invest in the future. So I receive my money today. A portion of my, a portion of my income is deducted. Okay, for me to probably to get, I want a... I want a Mercedes, I want to drive a Mercedes, I want to drive a classic car, I want to be able to afford um, something luxurious. Now, what is, the, um, what is the sustainability of that income? That is something that should be critically reviewed. Now, this, uh, we're looking at we're benchmarking Nigeria with claims where inflation rate is like about 1%, 2%, 3%, in which the likelihood of things increasing within a space of one year is just very minimal. Now, and they are able to maintain that and know that, okay, there is this career progression. Even some governors have not even paid the minimum wage of 30,000 that Labour is having a razzmatazz with the government and rubbing shoulders with the government. So even if you've not addressed the basic need, will I be able to even afford the luxurious needs? Yes, they've received a quite number of applications. Over 2 million people have applied for the scheme. But I think the government still needs to take a react, still needs to sit back and look at what are the major concerns of the people. The major concerns of the people is not even to afford a luxurious lifestyle. Nigeria has gone from about 30 million of Nigerians are above the, are below the adverse poverty line. So Nigerians keep getting poorer and poorer. If something radical is not done, Nigerians will continue to get poorer and poorer. Do I now want to be financing credit um, when I know that I'm not even able to feed my family, I'm not even able to cater for my basic needs? And thereabouts. So it should be, it's, it's a very laudable idea, but it should be, it should be tapered. Let's sit back, address basic things, food infrastructure. Let's address things of um, people should be able to consume food easily and um, people should be able to have something to be able, be able to live and even live for the next day before even looking at whether I'm going to have a credit scheme yeah. Yeah, to be able to pay back. But it's very good. But um, for example, the governor government just launched like about a 1 billion um, fund um, access for manufacturers to be able to access a 1 billion and for small and medium scale enterprises to be able to access 1 million um, as a credit rather than going to the bank to no bank is if the prime lending rate is 26.75, no bank is going to give you rate less than 35%, which is not sustainable. So if the interest rates are lower, 
Um, people are likely to onboard on that scheme, but let us even go back. The uncles brought out programs. How many people took this money and refunded it? So most people see that this money is coming from the government. They say, oh, this is our one share of the national cake. Nigerians' rationales are not, is not yet, Nigerians' mindset is not, is, not, is not yet firm to be able to say that, oh, let me even develop a credit habit. How many rating agencies do we even have in Nigeria, aside from Augustus and, um, and probably GCPR? We don't even have a strong credit rating agency that is able to assess and benchmark with international standards. So I think it's a very laudable idea. However, they should sit back, even though they are receiving applications, and address more basic things, more infrastructural needs than um, forging ahead with a credit load scheme. So you probably think that... Uh Government is not hitting the real issues, and um, they are not they are not hitting the most pertinent issues at the moment. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So if if that's what you think, so tell us what you think uh, should be federal government's focus if Nigerians if they must end this hardship. If they must end the hardship, first thing they need to address is the state of insecurity. An average farmer cannot access his farms. If you, you, are, you are scared of going to your farm because you are likely to see me the likes of Boko Haram. As you are coming out of your farm, you are meeting bandits. Address the state of insecurity. Let even people be able to have access to their livelihood. Let people be able to fix things. We saw that federal government wants to roll out CNG buses and to be able to ease transportation. In fact, the transportation subsidy that Lagos State said we were going to provide, they, they just wiped it. it. <laughs> they removed it. So, um, Fix things such as real, let people be able to have access. At the point in time when you when you even get to Alausa, there is like a Lagos agro hub where people can buy at least like about 40% discount yes. of the market price of those goods. After the first test, the second test, the third test, they, they rolled it out, they rolled it away. Um, we saw the Honorable Minister of Agriculture came and probably around February 8th that um, was going to release like about 35,000 um, maize or grains to the population. How many of them get to the act? How many of them get to the actual farmers? that were able to plant. Um, we saw that, okay, they were trying to reduce, substitute like import paddies for rice so that people are able to plant. So those are basic issues. The basic issue Nigeria really need to address now is the state of insecurity. Infrastructural development, such as power. Yeah, we've seen things like, um, after the labor union shut down, we've seen things like banding customers are able to have accessible uh, um, power supply to a reason, even though we know that the cost of power, cost of generating and distributing those power is quite high. Nigerians might not be able to afford it across all sides, but you first need to even address issues of, if, um, of basic feeding, physiological needs. Let's even look at the mass law hierarchy of the feeding, clothing, and shelter. If you've not addressed feeding, clothing, and shelter, you're going to address things like um, security, um, you're addressing things like oh, personal achievements such as, oh, I have a credit scheme, I'm able to buy luxurious and this and so. First need to address things such as food, agriculture, investment in agriculture. Um, we have dangote fertilizer that is available there. How many of these local farmers have access to it? How many onboarding programs? How have the forest of Nigerians been extended? Yeah. How has trade been facilitated for Nigerian major exports, agricultural non-produce? So if you even look at Nigerians' um, import um, split of income, um, split of export, which is from foreign exchange, about 60%, about 80% is going to crude oil, about 10% is going to natural gas. Agriculture, which usually which even funded Nigerians' economy when Nigeria was at civil war in the 1967 to 1970, is accounting for less than 4% of the total population. There is no way we are going to be sustainable to that. Let people be encouraged to go back to farms. If you go to the village now, so everybody wants to come to Lagos. Those in Lagos want to jack and go for a greener pastures. But people, if we don't go back to farms, by the time this crude oil is not able to meet our needs, it meets our needs because in the next 10, 20 years, people have already migrated from the from using fossil fuels such as crude and they've used renewable energy, what are we going to rely on? So it's very important that you address it at the grassroots level, not getting some ministers that are just sitting down in the public offices and be saying, oh, we release these green farmers. Ensure you get to this farm. Let's be able to say that, oh, so-so farmers have been taken out of poverty line. Uh, these so-so farmers have been able to have access to it. We'll be able to increase the yield on their farms and be able to make it easier for you also to be able to generate um, non-crude income. And the only way the only, um, the only way out from Nigeria generating just crude income alone is just um, agriculture. Agriculture is more or less like the safest route. We've seen other climbs that are not even as big as Nigeria that are surviving majorly on agriculture and they're doing well. And Nigeria has survived majorly on agriculture even at the time of very deep crisis. And Nigeria still did well. So why should we just say because we found a new bride and we decide to forget um, going to our farms? We, the government needs to focus on issues of insecurity, 
public spending, government, the cost of governance in Nigeria is quite too high. Government needs to curtail that. That's the only reason why Labour is going to be asking for like about a 600 to 700% because you know, as soon as they come into office, you bought a 40, you spent 40 billion on fueling, um, fueling, um, buying SUVs, which why you, you are buying SUVs, but the roads are not good. You are still going to plow the SUVs on those roads. You are going to increase the cost of maintenance of those SUVs, which is another cost that is going to come to the government. You spend like about 90 billion on Hajj, um, subsidy. What impact will someone going on Hajj is that into the development of Nigeria? When we still have issues of um, bad roads, we have issues of farmers are not able to even assess yeah. basic, um, basic amenities. Yeah. Huge concerns you've raised there. Um, um. Tosi, very huge concerns that you really raised this morning. But then, let's, let's take it uh, one, one point at a time. You talked about um, what government should do. Uh, they must ensure that the farmers go back to farm. And how do they do that? They must improve security. You also talked about the fact that they must improve infrastructure. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you because um, uh, when uh, Mr. President flagged off the Lagos Calabar uh, Coastal Highway, one of the things he said was that the, 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 the highway has a propensity of creating 30 million jobs for Nigerians. And I'm asking, is that the kind of infrastructure that you think is, is pertinent at this point in time? Lagos Calabar Coastal Road is not, is not right for Nigerian economy now. We see a, it's, it's a laudable project, probably can come probably in 20 years' time. Not now. First, we have rails that is able to move over 50 percent of the consumable product that leaves the north gets perished on the road we don't have our real we have real system um even though one of the ministers in uh, the ministers in the presidential cabinet got the best performing minister which is yes on weekend the fct minister part of the is we have to fix the real system we have real system that can transport these things what is the logistic what is the cost of even moving goods from the farms to the market we should not be focusing on coastal road. Coastal road can come later. We have a road system. We have a um, transport system that have not been addressed. We are now saying we want to go and build coastal roads. The even internal roads that is able to address or even move people from move goods and commodities from from the farms or from the place where they are being produced to the uh, market where everybody can have access has not been fixed. How many trailers break down on the Lagos Ibadan Express with pirates when something good was done on it? But we have most of them rather than using roads. These things have been transported via rail. We have rail system that can bring it directly even down to Oyembo market. There's a rail system that can even get to that place. So that has to show that the government should focus on what are the major quick wins. Um, Labor Calabar Express, we are, not um, we are not going to get the benefits in the short term. I mean, in fact, it's not going to take the government less than five years for them to be able to complete that 790 or right. above, above 700 kilometers in this thing. Before you now start getting the return on investment, what are the quick things you can what, do? What could possibly be the return of investment? <laughs> uh, well, the, we're looking at, okay, they're saying like it would cost them like about 16 billion to build that road, which I don't think is is well, depending on how they are going to do but the, the, what is the return on investment they are probably going to be getting tariffs from the road so as for them to be able to to be able to cover up one or two costs they are going to um because it's along the coastal line you'll we'll be able to have access those that are importing directly from let's say eating kind of power or probably ports will be able to use that road to be able to assess the entire land but i don't think that is a, a sustainable project in Nigeria should focus on when people are bleeding. Your house is suffering, you have bloods all around your neck, you want to go and be building an ivory tower. Yeah, the ivory tower is very good when you have, you're sure you're able to take care of your basic needs. But things such as even ensuring that the farmers are even able to go to farms, you have an aggregator hub, you have a storage collection. Yeah, you have like about 30,000 metric tons of meat that you stored somewhere in the federal capital that people were even exploring. Yes. Like, people were going to break the bounds of it. But have the local aggregators, have the local community hubs, whereby, okay, this is a farm settlement, you can bring all your produce and store it and you show that, oh, you have security, you have access to this particular, and by the time it is being sold, you have able to see your phones. So those are basic things that the government should focus on rather than building coastal roads that are not required for Nigeria at this point in time. Yeah, it can be done probably in 20 years time, but I don't think it's a priority for the government, no. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you for, I mean, I'm excited hearing this uh, from you. I mean, it's important that we say this uh, because the government even said, when they said 30 million jobs, I question I asked is, uh, do we have data to back this um, expectation? I mean, uh, there should be a research work that was have been done to say this is the kind of jobs that this um, Lagos Calabar Highway would bring about, how much work. There should be data, there should be a research data to, to back up this claim. But we, we haven't seen any. So we begin to question uh, the sincerity of um, the claim by government 
30 million jobs. It's a, it's a lot of figure. 30 million of our 120 million, or maybe one, one, I mean, 200 million Nigeria, maybe 60 or 120 million workforce and all of that. 30 million is a huge chunk that it will be taken off the unemployment, unemployment uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, radar. So let's even take a classical look. I went down with it, was building his refinery. Yes. Yeah, we have a lot of Nigerians here, but that is still address the education system. Dangote hired more expatriates in development of the refinery than he hired local Nigerians. Should I blame him for that? No, of course. He wants to get the best. Um, he's bringing up something that is novel, or something that has not been done before. He needs to go and learn from the expert to build it. You said you want 30 million jobs that will be provided. Is your polytechnic, is your university enough to provide them the, the required training or get them ready for them to be able to build that coastal. Let's look at a, a case study, China. China had to first invest in its education before it start investing in its development. So also India. India also has to invest first in its education before it start investing in development. Now, the education of Nigeria, the Nigerian educational system, the, tech, um, the technical educational system is not even ripe enough to be able to bring people that will be suitable to be able to even get the uh, bring mandate, about the development, bring about the development of those jobs. You still need to go and bring expatriates in which when they are going, they will repatriate funds to their country, which is not sustainable for Nigeria in the long term. So you don't fix the educational system. You want to go and bring other people. You want to feed other people and make other countries richer. Meanwhile, you have some more um, painful problems that are biting you and you, you decide not to look at that. Well, Tosi, we, we, if, if I allow us, I'm sure we can go on and on and on on this conversation. But we have to wrap up the show. Right about, right about now, in 60 seconds, your final thoughts as we look at the policies of this administration. Um, it's very good to plan. However, you should not plan, you should consider all scenarios, you should consider what are the costs, what are the effects, you should not take a reactive plan, you should not be more reactive, you should be more proactive in your solutions, and you should be, um, the government should look at everything from an holistic point of view, not trying to address one particular need um, or minimum wage today. I want to fight minimum wage. I want to fight something one at a time. Look at a whole holistic picture and engage more with the, with the public than just some people sitting down in their offices that are presenting something to you. Well, we are talking a lot of public policy aspects. It's a pleasure having you come talk to us on News Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, thank you have a lovely day.